So here are 20 more advanced tips you should definitely know in Pal World. I spent over 100 hours playing this game at this point. There are many things that I learned along the way and quite a few that I missed in the last video. So in this one, I hope that I will cover everything. As always, a thumbs up on the video would be greatly appreciated and let's jump in. Coming up to number one, do yourselves a favor, immediately catch a Gale Claw and go ahead and craft its gloves, which is an item you can unlock at level 23. This is going to give you by far the best glider in the entire game, which is Gale Claw himself, which you can now cast at any point as your very own glider. Even if you don't have him summoned and have something else instead, as long as he is in your party, he's going to act as your glider for the entire duration. Now, not only is he extremely fast, but it also takes into account any speed buffs it comes with. So if you drop one with Swift, Nimble or Runner, this is going to also count for that glider speed, which is why it makes it better than any endgame one you can get. Plus, it's also the best alternative you can get when you jump into caves, especially against alpha bosses. Many of them are at the end of some of these very lengthy tunnels. Well, this is going to make that a breeze and let you traverse it in seconds. Moving on to number 2, there's technically a way to get infinite stamina for your mount and glider with this very easy trick. So the next time your flying mount goes low on stamina, immediately dismount and activate your glider. This is going to give you some extra air and push a little bit forward. But we will bring this one step beyond. So the next time your glider this time around goes low on stamina, drop from it and hold the right mount button pressed. Also, making sure that the mount is somewhere below you can help quite a bit. And what this does is that it immediately transfers you on the back of your very own mount. And what you will notice is that now your mount is back to full on stamina so that you can continue and resume your flight. Rinse and repeat from this point on, jump from the mount to the glider and then back whenever your stamina is low and you can pretty much cover the entire map without ever having to stop. But of course, some of the mounts are better than others at this. So the faster the mount is, the easier it is to mount as you fall from the glider. At number 3, another set of very good items are the headbands. Whenever you have pals with these available, immediately go ahead, unlock and craft them because they either give you a very special power or a very strong upgrade. So let me give you the example with the dig toys. If you craft its headband at level 19, this is going to massively improve its mining speed. By default, it's not that great. It only deals like one damage several times each second. However, if you do go ahead and get the headband, that's going to instead turn to 24 damage multiple times per one second. And this goes even higher the more your pal levels up. So at level 50, it's going to be about 50 or more damage for each of the spin, which is going to absolutely shred any ore much, much faster than anything else in the game. I'm pretty sure that this is even faster than level four miners, making it the best one in the entire game. So absolutely worth getting it. Moving on to number four, I'm sure that you came back to your base on many occasions only to stumble upon this. Your workers don't do anything, everything is laying around, nothing gets carried, plus they stopped eating and sleeping so they get a whole bunch of ulcers and depression and weakened effects and all that kind of stuff because the AI just broke down. The reason for that is because you did not get one of these, which is the alarm bell, a level 4 unlock but such an amazing change. So whenever you have problems with the AI, immediately go ahead and activate this and make sure that it's currently focused on work mode. This is going to, as you can see, immediately make all of your pals in that base start doing their own jobs, which in this case immediately made them start carrying all the goods that they left behind. Plus they will resume eating, crafting food, cooking and all of that and it pretty much fixes the majority of the problems you have with them. Even in the case of a raid, many times it happened that my NPCs completely got blocked. Well, if you change this from the attack mode to work mode and vice versa, it can help a ton in these situations. I mean, just look at this. I never got a chance to get the Wumpa's work until I placed down this bell alarm. Well, now they finally do the work they are supposed to do. At number 5, there's a big mistake that can literally destroy your entire base. So I'm sure that maybe you build up a very nice tree house, maybe got it very much up in the air, maybe you created some really nice base. Well, one of the first tips I have is to absolutely not use wood for main structures. Try to use stone, especially once it becomes available. It's actually just as abundant as wood is. So definitely try to build at least the outer walls out of this rock as this is going to prevent any fire damage 
destroying your entire base an even bigger tip is that be careful at your load bearing so let me give an example if i were to destroy this set of stairs right here the entire structure does not collapse because there are others that will hold it so the walls behind it are the ones doing the support this time around but there's a big way in which you can mess this up and that is if you just build these stairs and leave them as the only thing to support the base because if anything damages them you guessed it it all goes to bits and i've seen people losing entire bases because of this reason either from their own mistake either from environmental damage and you definitely don't want to get caught off guard in this way so absolutely always reinforce any structures you create with additional pylons walls and platforms so that if you destroy one the others still keep that support intact Moving on to number 6, one of the best ways to solve your early on weight limits is the grappling gun. In fact, this is one of the best upgrades in the entire game and you can already get one of it at level 12 and then many other upgrades as you level up until 50. So this lets you basically carry infinite amounts of weight no matter what because you can just use the grappling gun to pull yourself to your destination which can be a further away box or chest in which you can then set up all the items that you just carried. This was the main way by the way in which I carried tons of materials between different bases without having to go back and forth multiple times or whenever you want to rearrange the base and want to destroy one of your chests you can just transport this very easily by grappling a line to your next one and bring your stuff to the destination. At number 7, here's a way to make your base a lot more efficient and don't have the AI constantly get stuck. One of them is to always place your food basket somewhere in the center of where they have their work in and preferably in a place that's also very open so that at any point any of these spells can come from any direction immediately eat and not get stuck in any structures otherwise you will constantly see them going depressed like how you saw them in my previous base another one is that your pal ai will completely ignore anything that is outside of the base limit even if it is only by a fraction so for example this ore is only half of it outside However, none of the PAL AIs will recognize it as part of the base and as a result it constantly gets completely ignored. Even if you manually assign them to this, they will not see it as part of the base so as such you're kind of wasting resources and finally here on the same note also try to keep your deposit boxes as close as possible to the source of extraction so that your pal ais don't travel for too long and they don't get stuck in terrain this is going to also make it a lot more efficient as things get deposited much faster oh and while we're on the subject of bases you can totally leave your cooked berries in the feed box because they will never spoil even though the timer over there is 15 minutes and it will constantly drop you will constantly see your pals coming in and eating it which means that it's going to constantly get reset so as you can see whenever one of these spells comes in and eats one of them it's going to completely reset the entire timer that is because each timer is per berry basis so as long as one berry gets eaten all of them get reset without any issues yes i've seen some comments saying otherwise but in my experience i even left this overnight without any issues and it never spoiled in three bases at the same time plus some of these cooked berries will help a ton with increasing sanity and are just better at um, keeping your pal satiated so they will not go hungry as often and number nine one thing to keep in mind is that medicine does not apply automatically however you can still make use of it and absolutely help your pals to completely avoid any damaging buffs so in this case absolutely always try to get a medical supply place that you can craft some of these low medium and high grade supplies so that you can treat pretty much anything from depression to fractures ulcers and everything else in between which is why i also recommended lilene in the previous videos so that she can craft these faster for you and the way to apply them is pretty easy just get close to any of your depressed or problematic pals press four and then choose the feeding option which is then going to let you give them any specific item from your inventory in this case you will treat their problems depending on the medicine that you have so once you give them that it immediately cures all of those problems and they will resume work at full speed at number 10 let's be honest the odds are stacked against us when it comes to catching especially higher 
grave bells well there are three things that you can do in order to change that in your favor and that is by electrocuting taking by surprise or taking sleeping bells let me give you an example with electrocution whenever you electrocute an enemy this massively increases your chance to catch that bell in my experience by at least like 15 to 20 percent which means you can either catch it much faster or have higher chances to catch him at lower levels so let me show you how this looks like on some of these fox sparks for example if i were to try and catch this one you can see that the chance to catch it is about 32 percent which is not that great but if I hit it a couple of times with my stun baton and get it electrocuted, this chance is now going to increase to 56%, which is much, much better. And I can even show you in just a bit that uh, if you wait for the debuff to drop, it's going to drop from that 56 back to 40 because I also did a bit of damage on it. So this is something you can both use early with the stun baton, but also later with some of your electricity pals you can totally do that at lower level pals and increase that chance even more the same goes if you take these by surprise so if you throw even a small sized ball to their heads but from the back you can even catch or have a small chance to catch pals that normally can't even be caught with that type of sphere i just wanted to let you guys know to increase your chances or whenever you have a lot of spheres laying around and want to test your luck also quick note at number 11 by far the fastest way to well just heal up your pals is to bring them back to the pal deck well that besides the fact that you can also use some of the medicine but in this case if you want to do it for free the pal deck is going to be the best so in this case i compared it with the one healing you get in your party with the one from the pal deck and as you can see you get about 10 healing per second while your pals are in your inventory meanwhile if you place them into your pal deck then the healing is much much higher than that so it pretty much jumps like 30 for every single second meaning that it can regenerate its hp much faster this is especially useful for example if you messed up in combat previously and just want to jump back in the next fight but don't want to wait too long and number 12, schematics are some of the best way to craft the best gear. Yeah, you should probably craft some of the low-end stuff you can already unlock into your technologies tab, but the best are going to be the ones coming up from schematics. I already covered how much of a difference legendary to normal quality already makes for several of the guns and some of the other legendary pieces I covered in yesterday's video. By the way, totally check that one out if you want to find out where to find all the 17 armor and weapon schematics in Pal World. But in the meantime, you can also get them additionally from dungeons. So, and dungeons, there's gonna be a couple of chests in there, and they also have a chance to drop some of these random schematics. You don't have to just farm them from their specific farm spots. So technically, this means you can also farm for the legendary schematics from these dungeons, especially the high-level ones, and have a decent chance, or at least a better chance to get them than by just farming the specific alpha bosses that drop them. At number 13, here are a few more things that I learned about the merchants and how to make the most out of them. One of them is for the black market guy, which is going to give you this list of all of the pals you can buy from him however if you throw him back in the pal deck and then back in your base that is going to instantly get reset so you can go ahead and basically farm for the best possible outcome and just buy it right away but this does another thing for you which is the fact that you can then buy pals that maybe you didn't find out just yet but want to know the location of you can just buy one of these specimens go in your pal deck and then reveal its location on the map this was one of the best ways early on in which i was able to find various species in different parts of the map that i did not even get to just yet but i could see all of this information right there oh and by the way there's absolutely no penalty from capturing these merchants even though you will enter combat and get a wanted level from these um, of course settlements like for example in dune shelter i pretty much captured all three of these but as you can see they completely respawned and now they came back as if nothing happened but I still have their variants back to my base, selling me pretty much the same thing. By the way, these are also some of the best merchants for ammo as well as creature bones, so that you don't have to farm this or wait for the later stages, especially the assault rifle ammo. I never had to craft any of this, as I could just purchase it from the vendor that I just captured back at my base. 
And second of all, another one of them is also going to sell you some of these creature bones that you don't have to go ahead and hunt for your own. So bones are used in crafting cement and a bunch of other higher level items. You can just get them in tons from this guy right here. Or you can also find another one a little bit earlier than the dune shelter. It's going to be at a small settlement. The same guy is going to be right here in the back, pretty much selling the exact same things. Now you likely notice that they also sell some of these undershirts, the heat and the cold resistance. I definitely recommend buying them right away because this is going to let you use any armor and get both heat and cold resistance. So in my case, I'm using a heat resistance undershirt with a cold resistance armor, which means I can go in any habitat and not have a problem with either heat or cold most of the time so let me just show you that in this case if i am in the desert and take the shirt off as you can see heat already starts affecting me i'm already starting to get damaged and this is generally not the thing i want so i can just put it off and have all of that cured plus i don't have to change from my cold resistance spell metal armor and the same goes if i were to do it the other way around if you have the other armor instead Similarly, the same goes with your mount. So if, for example, you go in a very hot region and want to cool off, you can totally use some of your cold or ice mounts to keep you cool and help you with that. And the same goes the other way around. If you go into cold environments, you can totally use a fire creature to keep you warm during the day. But of course, in this case, you will still maybe want one of these heat resistance undershirts. Like, for example, in this case, if I take it off, I will still get affected by the heat from this zone so that is still something i recommend having at all times nonetheless at number 16 here are a few tricks to hasten your base leveling speed so for example let's say one of your next projects requires you to build a certain well base element that will also give you a level up to your base well what you can do is to actually go ahead craft that but let's say in this case you don't have enough materials. What you can do is to then base upgrade right away to the next level and then immediately go back and scrap that element in case you do need some of its components. In this case, circuit board at this stage when I was playing was pretty difficult to get so I just scrapped the previous project I created so that I could funnel it in the next one which would have been the electric furnace. This made it much easier for me to just complete leveling up stage my entire base without any issue by just using the exact same elements for multiple stages. That is because scrapping things will not devolve your base once it's already created and you press the upgrade button. And the same goes, for example, if you have multiple bases on many occasions, I noticed that I had the requirements unticked, but I already had maybe some of these projects crafted in a different base. So in this case, I highly suggest you checking around if you did not already complete that. So go ahead and try to complete those check marks in that same base so that you can immediately do the base upgrade. This brings us to the next quick tip and that's going to be you can actually farm these alliance guys for some quick ammo as well as medicine. There were many occasions in which I needed maybe some arrows or maybe some ammo for my weapons. You can just take a big group like this really quickly with your pals and they will drop quite a bit of that ammo and medicine. The higher you go in level and into higher level zones, the better the ammo and the medicine that they drop, plus other items too. So for example, in the level 45 plus zones like Mount Obsidian and um, the Frost region, they will start dropping even assault rifle ammo and shotgun ammo, so you can never go out of it as long as you play properly. But of course, you can also use some of the previous tricks I talked about. And finally, let's talk about a few more breeding tips to make your best absolute pal because there are a few things people are missing out over here and there's gonna be a bigger video that I will follow up with soon. One of them is the fact that the alpha bosses are significantly better than their non-alpha variants. So for example, in the case of Blazimuth, the alpha variant has more HP by about 5-10% to and also some better stats usually than the one that you get via breeding. This is especially useful to know if you got maybe some of these pals via breeding other species to get that result. Probably the biggest in this case would be Anubis, which you can get early from two unrelated low-level species. But if you compare this with the one you get in the desert, the alpha variant, as you can see, is only level 47. However, it already has 4,358 max HP compared to my higher level 50 Anubis, which was almost perfect for me, which only has 4,100. But depending on the species, this can be much, much higher than that, even higher than 10%. It can depend quite a bit. 
Another thing is that they might be missing specialized or legendary passive skill. For example, in the case of the Anubis in the desert, the alpha boss, this comes with this very interesting Earth Emperor ability, which increases its powers by 20%. Whereas the one that you do via breathing does not have that unless you breed the alpha boss with a regular Anubis so that it transfers that to them. And the same goes with Jormuntide. Jormuntide also has Lord of the Sea if you get the one in the alpha encounter. The same goes with, for example, the Blazimut. It has the Flame Emperor, which gives it 20%. And there's also the ones even stronger than that with the Legendary. So eventually, you will want to pass these down to their specific breeds. I will again follow up with a much bigger video soon, but this is going to be just some of the tips you really want to know. Some of them can actually go much higher than that. So that's why you will always want to eventually the end game breeding for you to be breeding the alpha boss with its default variant until you can pass down that trait and then you can combine it with something else or do it from the bigger boss the legendary quality to the lower one again full on video following soon anyway this is pretty much it with the video let me know down below if there's any other cool tips or secret things that you know of but others don't in the meantime thanks much for watching and i'll see you in the next one